I'm uh, Professor Shumit Ganguly. I'm a professor of political science at Indiana University in Bloomington. And uh, I am going to attempt to summarize rather briefly uh, some of the proceedings of the security panel, held, uh, uh, which was part and parcel of the conference on building Pan-Asian connectivity held in Calcutta earlier this week. And there are essentially three themes that emerged from this rather large and significant uh, panel. And the three themes are as follows, and I will briefly elaborate on all three themes in a moment. Uh, the first is, it's a fascinating development that in India's northeast, which is actually quite close to Southeast Asia, most importantly it borders on Bangladesh and on Myanmar, Burma, uh, we are witnessing an end to a series of insurgencies that have racked this region from the 1960s onwards. But even as these insurgencies wane, there is a rather uh, uh, trying development and a rather disturbing development, and this is the growth of a series of criminal networks in the region. And these networks are mostly focused on questions of human trafficking and drug trafficking, thereby creating a new menace for the Indian state. And some of these criminal organizations have links that stretch across Myanmar into Thailand and are involved deeply in the drug trade and in the human trafficking trade. And while the Indian state has made efforts to curb both, it has not been entirely successful in this endeavor. So while one major problem, for the most part, has come to a close, with important exceptions in Nagaland, where there is continuing negotiations with various Naga separatist groups and also attempts at repressing them um, beyond that particular insurgency, which is sort of in its dying embers, um, we are now witnessing a new threat uh, to the entire region stretching all the way from India's northeast into Thailand. In considerable part, some of the participants on the security panel were uh, highlighted the fact that some of these problems um, that have cropped up in the wake of the insurgencies is related to the fact of poor governance, that these states have not witnessed uh, ex exactly exemplary forms of governance. There are often ties between local politicians and militant groups and also um, uh, various uh, uh, people engaged in shady practices um, and consequently governance itself is at question which enables some of these organizations to sustain themselves and um, consequently poor governance is closely correlated uh, with the, the uh, growth and the persistence of these criminal networks. So that constitutes the second theme that emerged from the security panel. There's a third theme that emerged from the security panel, and namely uh, the militarization of the region. The militarization of the region, of course, in part, is a legacy of the long years of the Indian state fighting a range of insurgencies, uh, starting from uh, what is present-day Mizoram to Nagaland, uh, parts of Assam and Meghalai. Um, uh, so the legacy, that institutional legacy, uh, to considerable degree racks the region and there is a very substantial military presence in the region, some of which of course would remain even if uh, all of this region emerged as a peaceable kingdom for the simple reason that one cannot overlook the presence of the looming threat from the People's Republic of China, which of course has worsened in recent years because of 
the Chinese claim to all of the state of Arunachal Pradesh, which the Chinese refer to as Southern Tibet. But uh, uh, so uh, with the increased growth of PLA capabilities, with Chinese road building activities in the region, to some degree, the presence of the Indian military is all but inevitable and inescapable. But beyond coping with the threat along the Himalayan border, there is still an overlay of a very substantial Indian military and paramilitary presence largely designed to maintain order and to prevent the emergence uh, or to cope with the emergence of any, or the resurgence rather, of any in, uh, insurgent groups committed to secessionism. In a related vein, there is the issue, the very vexed issue, of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, uh, which is a sort of almost a source of constant unhappiness and constant irritation to a whole range of civil society groups, which feels that the very draconian, heavy-handed provisions that are embedded in that act um, in many ways inflames the sentiments of the local citizenry and needlessly contributes to social tensions. But the government, despite various committees that it has appointed to look into the Armed Forces Special Powers Act and the possibility of repealing it, really hasn't acted on it uh, uh, in a way markedly similar uh, to the invocation of the act uh, and the long-term persistence of this very uh, controversial act in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, um, because it does give police and paramilitary personnel and military personnel uh, extraordinary leeway in terms of the use of force and largely shields them from any form of civilian criminal prosecution for acts conducted under uh, the, the cover of carrying out uh, their uh, professional duties. Um, and activists who were on the panel spoke in rather passionate terms about their hostility towards this act and suggested that the sooner this act is repealed, the better. Um, and finally, uh, quite apart from these three themes, I would be remiss if I didn't mention something about uh, the contributions of a scholar and uh, civil servant from uh, Southeast Asia, specifically the Philippines, uh, who spoke about counterterrorism cooperation beyond India's shores and uh, the attempts by India to reach out increasingly to various states of Southeast Asia, particularly under the aegis of uh, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, um, to prevent uh, some of the troubles that plague parts of Southeast Asia from actually washing up on India's shores, uh, given the porousness of borders uh, and uh, uh, stretching from Thailand into Burma, uh, into India. So these then constitute the principal themes and concerns uh, that were addressed on the security panel.